Mr. Roy, do you think a violent solution to the conflict between white and black is inevitable? And now, sir, what are your own plans for the future? Can be reached on the future status of Southern Rhodesia. Will you support such an agreement and attend a conference on the winding up of the Federation? Well, of course, I would like to know the terms of the agreement, but if Mr. Field was satisfied with what had been achieved, I should be only too happy to collaborate and get on with the whole purpose of the next conference, that is to deal with the dissolution of the Federation. You have emphasized the economic dangers of a breakup of the Federation. In view of this, what are your views on the expression of confidence in an African-ruled and separate northern Rhodesia recently advanced by the copper mining companies? Well, frankly, I don't particularly remember the details of the views that were advanced, but I accepted that they were advanced. And frankly, again, I don't see what choice the mining companies had but to take that line. You have always been a champion of racial partnership. Mr. Field was recently elected as Southern Rhodesia's Prime Minister on an anti-partnership ticket. And yet many African leaders have said that they find it easier to get along with Mr. Field than with yourself. Would you care to comment on this apparent contradiction? Yes, I would. First of all, of course, I don't accept the contention that Mr. Field was elected on an anti-partnership uh, policy. Mr. Field was elected uh, on a new constitution in Southern Rhodesia, which does, I think, enshrine to a considerable degree uh, a form of partnership, uh, not using those uh, specific words. Secondly, I think the defeat of my own particular party, the United Federal Party, as it was at that time, was due in the main uh, to influences from outside, intervention by the United Nations in the affairs of Southern Rhodesia, the feeling that too many concessions were being made to pressures from outside, particularly from uh, British sources, these all had a great effect on the outcome of the election. And I don't accept that it was basically uh, on the lines that your question implies. Whether Africans uh, would prefer to deal with Mr. Field and myself is a difficult question for me to answer. I have little difficulty in dealing with Africans, and contrary to what is generally known, I do have considerable contact with African leaders but it is unwise to publicize these things in Central Africa today. What do you think of Dr. Vervoet's Bantistan policy? Well, it would be extremely unwise for me to comment on the affairs of another state. I think you know my own views. I support partnership. And if I may say so, I think it is a great tragedy that the original view accepted by Commonwealth Prime Ministers that we would not comment and interfere in the affairs of other parts of the Commonwealth was not adhered to. I consider this is going to be one of the factors that is going to lead to the breakup of the Commonwealth, the interference with, e with each other's affairs. He's made tremendous concessions in the last few years, has been mainly responsible uh, for the development that has taken place, certainly in the southern half of the continent, he sees that his concessions have brought him little, and I think that the destruction of the Federation has brought him up against hard reality. The fact that he's now got to assess the circumstances under which he can stay here. What do you think are the minimum conditions for a settlement that the whites will accept? If you don't mind me saying so, I, I don't think that one ever looks at it in those terms, and I don't think you can lay down conditions. You see, here in the Rhodesias, there has never been any doubt in the minds of those people who've been in authority that the franchise qualifications are reasonable and fair. There is no question of a man being refused the right to vote merely on grounds of color. We've tried to set what one would describe as a civilization test by laying down minimum qualifications. Very hard to do, I admit, but nonetheless we have tried to do it. And therefore we have accepted that basically any man, irrespective of color or creed, uh, can qualify and play his part in the government. As far as Southern Odisha is concerned, there has never been a time since responsible government was granted in 1924 that a black man couldn't be Prime Minister of Southern Odisha. He could have been from the first day of the grant of, of the responsible government. If the Africans are not prepared to accept these conditions, uh, are you prepared to defend the present position of the whites by force? Do you think it should be uh, 
offenders by force. Well, really, what you are asking me to, 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 to answer is this. I, I, first of all, dislike hypothetical questions, and I hope that we've never really got to face up to this as an issue. But what you are asking me is whether I am prepared to see everything that the white man has built up on this part of the continent destroyed if the Africans so feel that it should be destroyed. And of course the answer is no. Uh, I am one who has supported uh, the ideals of the British Commonwealth, its belief in justice, in integrity, and the setting up of good government. And I believe that most of the whites and many of the blacks support the view that this should continue. If you are asking me whether the white man is prepared to defend his rights on this continent, my personal view is yes. That doesn't mean to say he's not prepared to share what he's created here with a black man, but he's not prepared to see the lights go out over this continent, merely, and see it return back to the darkness of a hundred years ago. He won't put up with that. This doesn't mean to say that I would stand by if I felt that I could do anything of any value and I wanted, uh, that I would refuse to do it. I don't want to come into politics again. I've had 25 years and I should be very happy now uh, to take a bowler hat. This is Peter Lynch of United Press Movie Town Television reporting from Salisbury. Today, the Prime Minister of the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland, Sir Roy Walensky, announced his virtual retirement from politics. Sir Roy. If the Africans are not prepared to accept uh, these conditions, are you prepared to defend the present position of the whites by force? This is Peter Lynch reporting from Salisbury. Test, test. This is Peter Lynch reporting from Salisbury. Test, test. This is Peter Lynch reporting from... Do you think a violent solution to the conflict between white and black is inevitable?